Hello, all your spooky listeners to the Media Bubble Podcast. It's the podcast that talks about all geeky media related topics. I'm Frederick and he's Carol. Let's get this show on the broadcast. Whoa. Hello, listeners. The Halloween season might be behind us, but we continue with our spooky frights. Tonight, we will serve you an episode of Welcome to Night Vale. As we discuss, and I try a to. A pleasant, a pleasant delight. And uh, <laughs> it's true, it was pleasant for me to talk. Uh, okay. So, uh, something that happened uh, exactly now is that. Uh, I fucked up the recording. We, we, uh, yeah, we have our first ever um, re- recording that got uh, lost, which uh, impression, impressively after <laughs> what, what have we done, 45 episodes of this podca- podcast has never happened before. So, this was our second attempt, which will be better, at our Night Vale episode. So, yeah, pl- welcome to Night Will. As, uh, so, our plan for today is to discuss... And introduce Welcome to Nightville, a podcast. Uh, recently, it had its 10 years, uh, 10 years anniversary, and I felt like it was an appropriate time to talk about it, since it's one of my favorite podcasts of all time. Um, I picked up an episode for Frederick, as to introduce him to the series, and it, uh, and we're going to mention uh, yeah, pretty much everything in between the show, just to give like an overview about it. So, and Welcome to Nightville is uh, a 10-year running show about a spooky, weird, kind of, co- not culty, but cryptid community in somewhere in the deserts of the United States of America. Uh, we follow a radio show host by the name of uh, Cecil Palmer, who is the heart and, and a pillar of the community. Uh, and uh, he just relates to us the events that happen in the town. Um, yeah, he's, he's kind of like a ra- radio show. It's kind of like you're listening to this the local radio show of the town, you can say. Yeah, like you pick up the strange uh, like connection from just somewhere that's not here. Uh, mm. And I love it. So it's a bi-weekly show, uh, which gives us a lot of time to breathe between the episodes and gives also time to speculate. Um, it's been written by uh, Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. And this episode specifically is written also uh, by uh, Bree Williams, who is a uh, like a mainstay guest writer for Night Vale. She also wrote uh, some other episodes, like guidelines for retrieval and guidelines for disposal. Uh, the recent episode Howl is also written by her, and the trilogy of Adora Jar also. So she has like great episodes of, uh, under her belt. Uh, yeah, and uh, the episode that we're going to talk about, episode 122, Community Spotlight, which is, uh, I guess, my introduction introduction to this podcast, and from what I heard before, Carol's favorite favorite episode. Yes, so I this this is the episode that introduced me to Night Vale because it's just so weird and just this whole premise of a radio show host trying to gaslight a community into believing that this person who never lived here has always lived here and you know her you love her and she's your best friend yeah they they, they st- he started a podcast but by, by saying even thought you have never known her and even thought she's new in the town you have, uh, have always known her you have always seen her uh, uh, and he even goes into the details uh, about uh, and and her and her name is, isn't even her real name. Yeah, like the, this. Uh, and and the background that that name entails isn't even her background. Yeah, because as from the beginning of the episode, we know that he's relaying this information from a government dossier. Like he just spoils the surprise for everyone that she that she that she's a fake night valian, I, I guess. Uh, so, uh, before listening to this episode, I actually forgot that Sigurd was supposed to be, quotation marks, from Sweden. Uh, which, on the re-listen, I found so funny, because we're in Sweden. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I, I actually thought that that was the reason why you, 
you chose this episode for me. Be just oh, is this why Carol chose this specific episode? Yeah, just the Swedish connection. <laughs> yeah, I know that Fredrik really, really loves Sweden, so that's something that will entice him to listen to more. <laughs> um, <laughs> So that, so that wasn't planned, actually. So our episode follows the story of Sigurd. Uh, she is assumably... Uh, Sigrid. Sigrid. She's assumably always lived here, and she uh, she and her family hail from Sweden, Hamstad. Uh, her favorite food is uh, rekmaka. A smörgåstårta. Uh, I just messed that up. My favorite food is rekmaka. Uh, her favorite food is uh, smörgåstårta, and uh, her... And... Uh... <laughs> I, 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 if, if I'm being honest, I had problem at first kn- knowing what what he he, he meant because the pro- pronunciation of that uh, smörgåstårta wasn't the best, but you kind of got what it was. What it was going for. I mean, we're Swedish, mm. so we would c- uh, catch on that really quickly. Um, so just to explain, like Cecil usually pronounced pronunciates the words wrong because. There is this mystique about Night Vale. There's this veil that once you get in, you can't wait, wait, leave. Wait, wait, wait. Is, that, is that on purpose? Yes. So, and because you can't go out, there's this... I mean, because there, in the other episodes, it's explained, like, once the veil lifts, people have no problem talking about, like, other places. Like, Michigan, they explain, like, they say it normally. But once the veil mm. is back... They say it weird. It's it's like this weird mystical connection, and it just makes people be weird about other places than Night Vale. Yeah, you you talked a, a little bit at, about the overlaying pl- plot in our last recording. Yes. And 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 I asked you uh, then when I think about it if the if the mysteries that be, that begin begin uh, was starting to. A, a end in the podcast it, it, it like had an explanation some events so and I actually think I answered you wrong because some mysteries are explained there are ongoing plot threads that continue for the, throughout the years like I said this is a 10 year old, 10 year old long show so mo- some of the plot lines really go for long uh, which makes it like it gives it like really cozy feel but mis- some mysteries are explained for example we had the dog park uh, throughout uh, the, the most of the early episodes, we had information from the government saying, do not, under any circumstances, enter the dog park. You're not supposed to look at it. You're not supposed to be in it. If you are in it, you are breaking the law. And not to spoil, but it's been explained extensively, and it's been part of Night Vale lore since then. Huh. There's also a cat park, which you can actually go into. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a dog park and a cat park. Exactly, but the dog park is the bad one. Do not go into the oh. dog park. <laughs> do, do not go into the dog park. Uh, and it's so funny because... Well, whatever you do, don't go in there. It's just that it's a fate sometimes worse than death not to follow the advising of, of Night Valians. Uh, okay, so uh, to recap this episode uh, uh, qu- quickly, we're not going to go, go super into it this time as we can do on this podcast, but uh, because you can listen to it quite easily on YouTube or any other podcast platform, I presume. Yeah, and I actually, uh, our listeners, I'd like you to give Night Vale a chance if you haven't, since, I mean, we're a small podcast compared to Night Vale, but please give it a listen. It's still good. It, I, I promise you. Uh, uh, it's probably more chance that they have listened to that than us. Probably, but yes. But anyway. So, uh, uh, as to recap the episode, uh, we've all Sigurd and her adventures in Nightfall. Because I have, I come in with this with new eyes, uh, should I recap it? Yes, that's a wonderful idea. Okay, so uh, I, I wrote down some notes about... Uh, about this episode because I have a hard time remembering things and uh, notes can sometimes uh, uh, help with that. So let's see what I have written for sale. Let's see. They are going on a European tour. Get your tickets now. Yes. Uh, The episode kind of starts like that. Um, (laughs) I was on tour and it was great. I I probably shouldn't have mentioned that. But anyway... uh, uh, let's see, feels like a podcast where the fictional man that has a radio show t- is talking about the town Nightvale. 
So yeah, you got that yeah, right. Yeah, that's the premise. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I didn't understand. I didn't know that when coming into it, and from what I understand, it's kind of a more horror themed podcast. Um, but uh, it's kind of it kind of also is a silly horror podcast because sometimes they come with lines like today's spotlight was curated by closing my eyes and pointing in the phone book so it's kind of a silly dark podcast you can say but i like to point that it's a little bit of a lie too when you when you think about it because how would he be able to pinpoint a person he'd like to make a uh, something about and then have a doc like a government dossier ready to go to explain who this person is. Okay, so um, so I kind of understood that this uh, was a radio team, and from what I got from this episode, it was a uh, a spotlight of a specific person in the town, which the was the new citizen Sigrid Borg, who has always lived there. Uh, so it, it kind of tells events of her life. I, I I kind of feel a, a bit weird about the events in her life because, well, once I started to think about it, uh, every event he picks up upon her life, it doesn't have, no no event really has a conclusion or an end to it. But yeah, I think that's a good point. But I but in comparison to what with, with our lives, like. I don't think every single event in our lives has like an end. It's just mm. weird stuff that happened to her, which makes like gives her backstory. Yeah. So it's explained to us that uh, she, uh, while she has always grown up in this uh, town and lived there, uh, her fam or parents are immigrants from uh, Sweden. Uh, yay. <laughs> uh, not so planned. She, she, not planned. So so she used to, uh, so she apparently used to in her younger years, uh, as a child, um, uh, go to Sweden each year and visit her gra- grandma and grandpa, and she she got, she has kind of some bad fi- feelings because she doesn't really visit that often anymore and doesn't really come into contact with her grandpa and grandpa anymore and uh, uh, it also makes a line that it's uh, her grandma and grandpa nowadays um, is kind of a representation of her lost childhood yes because as it's explained in the episode her grandma is beginning to feel bad and I think you caught that her grandpa uh, beca- like started the drinking war. Yeah. Which yeah, it's it's it might wax philosophical, but it's interesting to think how how that represents Sigurd, which we all know and love. Mm. Yeah, uh, as we said, we have all we have always known her. Sigurd was uh, apparently a lonely child. She was shy, so relatable. At least for me, I guess. <laughs> she tried. <laughs> she tried a singing contest once in school with her favorite song, but was laughed at, and never listened to the the, the song again after that point. As uh, that song, after being laughed at in school, represented uh, uh, bad memories. But uh, before she, she sang it, uh, that was one of her favorite uh, songs. Which later comes back in another instance. Mm. Uh, so, um, le- let's see. Uh, later in high school, uh, she gets some friends from apparently being a great lab partner. Which uh, which supports her being, like, which supports her getting a diploma for marine hauntology. Hmm. Uh, she is apparently very great at the dissect- dissecting animals or dead animals. Never something really uh, I did in school, but okay. I think I did once, and it was like a did you? part. Yeah. Huh. Uh, um, f- let's see, and then we have uh, the junior high ball. Yes. Do you want to explain that part, Carol? Yeah. So basically, 
uh, like when I think of Night Vale, I mostly think of the uh, Death Heat of the Universe ball. It's because, as I said, this was my first episode when going to the series, so it really stuck with me how just beautiful this whole concept can be. Uh, basically, Sigurd is uh, attending her junior prom, or prom, and the theme is Death Heat of the Universe. Uh, people are, like, boys are licking on uh, styrofoam to color their uh, tongues, she's getting to, like, a little bit weird, uncomfortable vibes at, with her friends because they're, they're kids, so they're, like, experimenting. Uh, she hides in her bathroom, but her friends drag her out to enjoy the party. It's just lovely. And, yeah, and and it turns out date. it's a fertility ritual. <laughs> yeah, her date leaked her hand. Yeah, which is another like, like a weird thing. Like, but it's not so far off. Like, if they're licking styrofoam, I could imagine some kids just like trying to lick lick you as well to get some paint on you. Yeah, and in the radio show right now, the narrator cuts to an actual music music segment of the show which i was surprised about that they actually had had original music and i was also surprised about it was quite catchy yeah so nightville has this thing where they have sometimes open submissions where you can submit your own songs and uh, the list is huge they i think i've only seen them open the submissions once since i started listening uh, so there's like a long waiting list to get on the show, but most of the songs are bangers. They do pop, they do rock, they do like limericks, hip hop, they do like instrumentals, spoken word, poems, anything that's weird and intriguing, they can probably get you that. Yeah, and this uh, this music was uh, of... Um... Oh, I don't know the name of the word in Swedish. Um, it's try, try, try. No, 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 in English. What, what, what did you say? The weather was called try, try, try. Yeah, but the instruments, the, the instru instrument that you hear in the song, what is it called in English? A violin. Oh yeah, yeah, violin. Yeah, yeah. The, I have. I, I don't think I have ever <laughs> felt like violin sounded so good as in that song. Yeah, which is... Like, it's, it was so catchy. It is. It really gives, like, as as I said, it's... They have this... They have this... Sis, they have this... Not system. The service where they can be featured. And through Night Vale, I found a lot of good artists that I still listen to. Uh, hmm? For example, uh, Sylvan Esso. They did a song called uh, Coffee, which they also showcase on Night Vale. And I listened to it, like... To this day, it was like my like one of my most repeated songs on Spotify last year. Uh, yeah, and they also yeah. and Sylvanus also has more music. Like that's the case with a lot of artists that are being featured. Mm. Okay, so uh, if we continue with uh, Sigrid and her uh, uh, high school years, uh, she starts to de develop a little a little lump appears in appears under her pinky finger. And after a while, that lamp, lamp starts to grow, uh, and it almost becomes like a second pinky finger. Yeah, like a sixth and finger. Yeah, and because her fa father thinks that it's kind of a bad mojo of where they live, I guess, uh, they move to a different uh, place that is close to a train, uh, train tracks of... Uh, of trains that should never be looked at, from what I can, uh, could understand. Yeah, it's like they, they, they move out to the middle of nowhere, and this house just has even weirder vibes from where they lived. Is that mentioned in other episodes about these trains that shouldn't be looked at? So basically, it's kind of all tied to the government agency. Uh, the secret government agency. Uh, basically, the Nightfall is under strict control of the secret police. And a lot of the things like helicopters, trains, vans that follow you around, they're kind of just like every like every day occurrence to these people, so it's brought up pretty frequently. Okay, so Sigrid, Sigrid's parents starts to fight, uh, and uh, so she, uh, and uh, after a while, she doesn't really want to be in the house that that often as she hear noises 
in, in the house that can't be explained. So she starts to hang out uh, uh, close to the train tracks where a bunch of teenagers uh, uh, like her, I guess, um, are, are, um, are hanging around and she becomes friends with them. Yeah. But, but one night where um, she is looking at her house, uh, she sees movements uh, from the glass window and once she sees that movements all her friends suddenly disappear like they were ne- like they were never there yeah and it's like where did they go where did they just were they conjured by the house where they have like her own imagination is like it just your mind is racing to like how do you explain this yeah, and the podcast kind of ends with the uh, uh, it's uh, the scene the the senior year for her, and um, they are making a school bo- book where they're making name tags for every person. Like, oh, she was the best uh, best cook, or she was the had the most beautiful teeth, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, we, we had those at school as well, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah, what? I, I became the ghost. What? Did did they actually write ghost on your title? Yes. Jesus. Uh, it, it's because I'm kind of, I'm kind of, quiet, usually I'm kind of quiet and I apparently walk kind of, I apparently walk really quietly too, so apparently what they, they said is that uh, sometimes I just could appear in a room b- without them no- noticing that I... <laughs> that you have arrived. Yeah. I mean, that's that's correct, but not maybe the kindest thing they could have written for you. <laughs> what did you... What uh, did, did you... Do you remember yours? Yeah, so I had like classes friend. Class and scumpies. Because, I mean... Class as friend. Yeah, it's just like, I kind of go along with everyone. I had, like... I was friends with everyone in my class, so... You know, Carol, he's just such a really good friend. No, but it's also, like... It's nothing personal. Like, when you think about it, it's really, like... Not not deep. It's like, oh, not best runner, not best jokester. No, class as friend. Yeah, what does it, that even mean? Yeah. Like, at least your thing was specific. I'm just like, non specific title. Okay. Uh, well, well, well any, anyway, um, she didn't get a, a name tag because it, wa- it wasn't be- because uh, the, the other class members wanted to be mean or anything. They just forgot her. Which makes you feel so sad for the poor girl. <laughs> yeah. Uh but but apparently she was always there. Was she was she sitting on? She she was in the school. Even though she never appeared in some pictures, apparently. Uh, but she apparently was the, there. She was just very very average. Yeah, she was just so average that nobody's seen her, and and I feel like because throughout this whole episode we're getting attached to this person. We see her like. We we see like even too much information that we should know about a single person, because mm. I we know each other for a long while, but I don't know how you felt at like middle school or like high school. I don't know every like that you had a weird pinky finger, like these intricate details about this person that are fake. Like we're getting kicked back to reality because we remember everything we just heard. Is a cover up for a person that's been that that is in like a, that that has a secret identity because they're in witness protection. Yeah. So I guess when we start the dis- the, the, the the discussion, we have to, I guess, t- think of uh, uh, Sigrid as factional correct character as they described her. Yeah. But but uh, it ca- one, one thing that it was very weird is how it ended because. It kind of ended that after high school, you, you your your the classmate would uh, have trouble remembering her, but uh, she gave you a jacket, were, and it had yeah, a secret she, note in it, and that note 
had very specific information and asked you to not mention the note that you found 10 years later and you know this secret and you share this yeah, connection you, you, with you, her. Yeah, you should not have read the, read the note and you should burn the note and forgot you ever read the note. And the thing is, within the canon of Nightfell, it's possible that the secret police is able to put those notes in a lot of people's jackets. Like, it's just a fact. It's, it's, it's a community where, like, secret police monitors you through your TV. Hmm. Do you do you think the the creators of the of the, this uh, episode and the ones that wrote it even has answers to what they are trying to set up? I hope. I have a personal theory that they leave some threads open ended hmm. as to when they have an idea on how to follow them, they just go with them. Okay. Yeah. Yes. One one thing that. Uh, be, be, that I want to know before, uh, um, be- because I, because I have never read or listened to this podcast more than this episode, um, I just want to know: Does C- Sigrid ever appear outside this episode? She appears in one episode, and th- this is it. No, she appears in one other. Sorry, I said it wrong. She appears in one other episode. And it's also written by the same ghost, not ghostwriter, just the the guest writer. Oh, okay. So, as this is a community, a lot of the characters come back. We have interns who make multiple appearances. We have, like, uh, love interests or just community regulars. Uh, So we come back to characters with time, just maybe not every single episode. Um, I actually wanted to talk about something additional, uh, namely uh, Good Morning Night Vale. So, Good Morning Night Vale is like a companion piece to Night Vale. It's a show by the voice actors and cast members of Night Vale, and they go through every single episode on on a two-week basis and talk about it. Um, Oh, okay, so it's kind of a behind-the-scenes. Exactly. They ask the creators, they bring up the guest writers, and specifically, this year they released the episode for Community Spotlight. Uh, and they also invited the, the, the guest writer for the episode. Um, that's how I learned that, uh, that, Bri, uh, that Bri Williams like wrote a lot of the episodes that I really enjoyed. Uh, and uh, that she, well, that she's a cool person just in general <laughs> because she writes horror movies. <laughs> she... she... Wait, she actually ra- writes horror movies. Yeah, she 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 does. She does like a lot of storytelling. She she and she also does like podcasts and like audio dramas that you can actually buy. How how, how famous are these people that created this podcast? So, uh, basically, that brings me up to another topic. Uh, so, Night Vale is not as popular as it used to be, but ten, nine, or eight years ago. It was a cultural phenomenon. Mm. Basically, do you know Tumblr? Yes. So a lot of the fame comes from Tumblr because it was, I mean, it was a weird, cryptic, silly show which appealed to a audience of Tumblr uh, users, and also mm. it freaked. Like, I mean, Cecil is gay. He has a he has a he has a love interest who is a man, and they're in a, in, in a happy relationship. And when you think about it, 10 years ago, a gay lead on a podcast or any media was pretty ri- uh, was a pretty rare sight. Yeah, uh, yeah, it kind of was. And that's why, so that, and that's also kind of the reason why it gained popularity, because it was something people could relate to. Uh, well, so the, uh, this, this radio show has a main character. Yes, and it's Cecil. Because okay. that's how we that's how we follow him. We learn about his love life. He frequently talks about his husband live on air against his like not wishes to not be on, on live. They have a okay. they have like a kid, they have a house. Like the the recent live show talked about them getting a house. And it was fantastic. So so so, so uh, the narrator is a real character, you can say. Yes. And it and, and it's it's so fun because throughout the run like, you learn a lot of the, about characters and you get attached to them. Um, but back to it being popular, like, when it was popular, it was really, really, really popular. Like, this is 
this is like the precursor to a lot of podcast shows that exist today. Mm. Um, I don't know a lot of a podcast show to be honest, but the uh, the the two creators are. Uh, um, Oh, have, they and... ri- have they have they written TV series or movies something like that? So besides the podcast, they all they also have other works. Uh, they have uh, what was it? Horror film number generator number nine is a podcast. They have uh, Alice is missing, I think is the book, which I read and it's so good. Uh, it's a story about a female truck driver looking for her wife that's been inexplicably vanished and she, and for five years she cannot find her she can't find any scrap of her and one day she finds her in a picture of a newspaper that she's alive that she lives and she ignores her it's so good it, it's it has so many themes about empathy and uh, like community struggle it um, it actually brings me to my next point they also write books which i read all of them uh, uh, oh, okay. Here we have three books. Yeah. So these are the most connected to Night Vale. Uh, but uh, yeah, Alice isn't dead. Is the is the is the one I've been talking about. But they have written Welcome to Night Vale, which follows a story about some characters from the show on their way to on their way to another town called uh, what was the city? Like the big city. Uh, I forgot the name. Uh, we have It Devours, which follows another thread from later on in the series, where they meet a like a ma- manifestation of God that tries to devour everything, and it's a and it's a cute romance from two per like two per uh, two points of view. Okay. And then we have the faceless old woman who secretly lives in your home, which is the most recent one. <laughs> okay. And this, you wouldn't guess, but it's a swashbuckling adventure. In the high seas. Oh. And it's and they're pirates and they're like stealing stuff and there's like intrigue and betrayal and it explains because the faceless old woman is a character in the show. She has spoken lines. There is a person playing her. Mm. And the faceless old woman is in everyone's home. There are multiple faceless old women. They all secretly live in your home and they can do shenanigans. They can like put spiders in your fridge or like shave you while you sleep or like send like send messages on your phone when you're while you're sleep like when you're away actually when i think about it because this is a, a supposed to be a radio show um it or it, it, sometimes the callers into the radio show that calls into the program i think there were there was one or two episodes i think the the you could count this as the october monologues where there's other characters doing monologues about their lives. And I think there was an episode of the Kareem Nazari show, which is later on, where they had Collins. Uh, can, can I ask you something? How does it how the, does it come that this befe- specific episode that we listen to, how was that your first one? When I find podcasts, I don't start from the beginning. I just found, like, I just scroll and find any interesting title. Okay, and you you thought that the, this sounded interesting, uh, then I guess. Yeah, Citizen Spotlight. Let's just focus on some on one thing, and it happened in yeah. this one. Okay, it just happened to be the one that that I well, love the most from the, with the girl fr- with the girl from Scandinavia. Yeah, it was so funny, but the thing is, it has so many other great episodes. For example, the 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 co writer who wrote this one also wrote a guidelines for disposal, which is basically. Night, Night Vale is shutting off its garbage dump. You can only throw away non-physical things, which are memories, feelings, uh, information that you don't desire. But once you throw it away, you cannot get it back. So here's an interesting thing, like, what do you throw out? You can get rid of anything that's not physical. Mm. Like... So if... Yeah, like... Uh, yeah? Go, 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 go. Go ahead. No, you continue. So you can, like, throw away trauma, or relationships, or, like, just this manifestations of what, what you're feeling. It's it's so cool. Yeah, yeah, that, that would be so useful with some things, actually. And then, 
100 episodes later, we have a follow-up, which is guidelines for retrieval. That's why I said they maybe have like a hangy idea that they want to bring back later on. So we mm. have, okay, this garbage dump is still closed, but you can pick out one thing that's non-physical, and it doesn't have to be yours. You can pick out from feelings, experiences of other people that have been thrown, thrown away. Okay. And so if we go back to our episode and we speculate a little bit about the things that happened in this episode and even even thought the, the radio show has, uh, told us that uh, nothing is really true about what he said. If we are going to just believe that everything he said is true. Mm-hmm. Um, so what 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 are our um, uh, let's say speculation about the things that is happening in her life? Or 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 or, or are they just moments in her in her life that we are just going, supposed to accept, or are we supposed to uh, go deeper into things? I think the whole premise of this episode is that we know that everything is fake. But we're still supposed to accept everything. Mm. So, at, l- at least in this episode, it's hard to speculate. Because we don't actually know anything about Sigurd besides what we've been told. Yeah, I feel like this episode is a b- bit hard to, uh, hard to speculate in some way. Because uh, there, there's mo- moments that happens in serious life. And I don't really know if there's that much mystery to them to be honest yeah like some 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 yeah i I agree yeah 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 as as, as we said about the train stay at the tra- train train kids that just uh di- disappeared for a, an in- instant uh, la- like that that could r- really just be an explanation of oh she is so lonely so she created those friends in her imagination exactly or maybe looking at the house makes the like she shifted to another reality or maybe i don't know i mean the thing is we had instances of weird stuff happening in that field before like we have a house that does not exist but it exists (laughs) but it doesn't we have but it's standing right there yeah but the thing is like you can even look in the house but it does not exist because you cannot enter it and then somebody entered Mm. it and it's like they cannot get out. Or we had an instance of... So there is this overarching plot of government agency. And they're somehow stealing, producing, I don't know what, tiny miniatures of a minuscule town. And they're mm. smuggling it away. It's all really fun in an episode called... Uh, an episode about you. So the main character is you. and the, and Is it me? No, you. Oh, you. So the character is called you, but since it's you, it's really fun to imagine yourself being in Nightville. And Cecil is narrating, like, through the radio, the movements and the dealings of this person throughout the day. And, like, what's their job, what they're doing, how they're stop being stopped by the police. And it's fascinating because it ties back to, like, these small houses being, like, smuggled out of Nightville. What are the small houses? What are they important? Why are they ticking? Okay. So what one last thing about this secret episode? What did you what did you you think about what was written in that note uh, in the last line? I wonder if it wasn't her admitting to be I mean I kind of want to believe that if we see that it's true, like if that fact is true that she left somebody a note that she admits to being uh, in uh, in protective custody, like uh, like she has a she has other identity. Oh, okay. So, th- you you think that that note m- might have some truth to it? Yeah, because I imagine that this was maybe if we're gonna speculate, maybe this wasn't a like a made up information. It was just like a warning to Sigurd that she has done this and that they know. Oh, because. Yeah, it's the secret government agency. They know everything. Mm. So, um, my introduction to this uh, podcast, I gotta say that I'm pleasantly so surprised uh, to, to it. I, li- I like the kind of uh, st- style and uh, the fe- feelings of it. 
La, the artwork is, is kind of sim, simple, but it's uh, really effective, I, I feel like. Yeah, it has and, really strong imagery. Yeah, and uh, how the whole set, setup and re, how it's writ, written and... Uh, yeah, I I also I also gotta say that the 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 guy who plays uh, Sigurd was his name right? No, Cecil. Cecil is the radio Cecil, host. Cecil, Cecil, Cecil. Like, excuse me. He has just the perfect voice for this kind of a uh, themed podcast. I gotta say. Yeah, like his voice is smooth as butter. He really mm. embodies this radio host energy. Uh, and the thing is, uh, if you go if you look at the last page, that's where we find the. Uh, the 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 poster for the 2022 world tour. Uh, so mm. since I went, I want that. You really see like Cecil perform, and it's like just imagine this smooth radio voice, but behind he's just like gesticulating widely, like he's doing like stretching and moving and like emoting. It was so fun to watch. <laughs> mm. So I gotta say that my first impression of uh, this podcast, I have never really watched them that much to podcast shows, but I gotta say this was this was a pleasant uh, listen uh, to, I guess. Would you? I'm not gonna force you, since I know that if I'm gonna force you to listen to more of it, it's not gonna work out. But would you imagine yourself maybe listening to it sometime? Hey, yeah, sure. We we. I can, I can pro- probably listen to some m- more episode. Uh, like like I said, it was really a pl- pleasant su- surprise. I really liked the kind of team and how it was a li- little. Yeah, it had a little bit of silly jokes sometimes and it was not just uh, dark ev- every time and yeah, mi- mysteries and uh, yeah, it's things like that. It's I, I really I really like how they pre- present the. Or present this down as, uh, oh, oh, uh, what we're listening to, listening to are is this fictional real life podcast that talks about this Night Vale town. I think it, it, it I feel like it gives it a unique look at it. It it definitely does. But I also like last edition, like because this episode we were listening to a fictional, like uh, like to a fictional broadcast. Of a fictional, like of a town, and they're also broadcasting about a fictional person. So it's like a two layers of fiction, almost. Yeah, it is. It, that is not just something that is usually hap- happening, or, or that they, he specifically says says that this person is uh, fictional. Yeah, it is. But I feel like we have reached the end. I'm very glad I could have talked about this podcast about this podcast with you because honestly i don't really have anyone else to talk about it with uh and even though we made this episode twice i still fe- it still felt fun for me to be able to talk about it mm, it, it was a re- really fun fun podcast i i have to admit um so with that as always oh actually there is one thing i wanted to say before we finish a little tidbit that you might not have known do you know we had a gaming channel? Uh, yeah. Okay. We had we had for. Do you remember our outro for that? Uh, yes. We were. Do you want me to do it? No, because if you if you remember, we had we we were gamer nights, and we said good night, listeners, good night. Just yeah. like in this podcast, because it was a slight reference to Welcome to Night Vale. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to let you know, um, but la, la. one one thing that uh, I can admit about that outro that I di- didn't re- that I, I didn't really get, get was the the outro good night. I just thought that we said as a, that as an ending, but apparently you thought that it was a reference to the night part of our name. Yeah, it was it was two references because it, it was good night as in gamer nights. And good night, as because I really like Nightville. Yeah, 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 but the like the six first episode, uh, I <laughs> didn't, didn't understand that reference. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it. <laughs> Next time, I'll tell you the reference in uh, in uh, header. All right. Uh, well, uh, as always, thank you all for listening. 
and we hope you enjoyed it as much as we have. Don't forget to follow, hit that bell icon, or follow us on socials like Twitter or any podcatcher of your choice. See you again in the next episode and have a wonderful day. Carol, give this episode a 1 out of 10 quickly. A 10 out of 10. Goodbye! 8 for me. Goodbye.